The fact that there's a step called association of an electrophile suggests that there is a reverse step called dissociation of an electrofuge, and there absolutely is. It's the D sub E step. Notice here again that D sub E in reverse is A sub E, or association of an electrophile. This is analogous to the nucleophile nucleofuge situation that we look, looked at in a previous pair of videos. The electrofuge is this group that departs without taking with it a pair of electrons. Because it doesn't take the pair of electrons with it, it ends up increasing in formal charge by one unit. D sub E often occurs at sigma bonds adjacent to cationic atoms, and the electron flow here is a sigma to A type orbital interaction. Notice that a pi bond is formed as a result of this interaction. Here's an image of the orbital overlap. In this particular example, the electrofuge is a silicon atom, and the sigma orbital that serves as the source is shown here. In green and yellow, we see the empty atomic orbital of the cationic atom two carbons away from the silicon atom. Notice that this orbital overlap differs fundamentally from the previous examples we've looked at in that the overlapping orbitals are aligned side by side rather than coaxially. The axis, for example, of the sigma bonding orbital is running in this direction, almost perpendicular to the direction of the orbital overlap, and the same is true of the axis of the empty atomic orbital. Side-by-side -side overlap like this is called pi-type overlap. One of the reasons it's called this is that it generally, although not always, as we'll see in a future video, leads to the formation of a pi bond. There is one exception to this rule that pi-type overlap leads to the formation of a pi bond. Strictly speaking, the definition of pi-type overlap is that it involves the side-by-side -side overlap of orbitals like this rather than a head-on arrangement as we've seen in the sigma-type overlap case.